Well, here we are. God has given us another day, and we're happy in it, and we rejoice in it, and I'm glad you're here today. I just want to uh, touch on a few things this morning. We've had a great week, VBS, a lot of young people, a lot of running around, a lot of excitement, and I, I tell you what now, Brother Allen, uh, are you kind of doing some things just to make me look good? I got a hippo here, and I, I got an elephant over here. Is he trying to tell me something? <laughs> I had a little too much to eat, maybe, this week. I can feel it. But if you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me over to Isaiah 41. <clears throat> and as, as we enjoy a fellowship with one another, we're also here to worship, aren't we? We're here to praise His name as we've done in song and, and special music. I, I love that song right there, <laughs> Brother Dennis. That's one of my faves. Isn't that what the people say? These are one of my faves. Yeah. But what a privilege it is to, to be able to come uh, to the house of the Lord today and to look at His Word and to study. You know, when you read God's Word, when you get in there and, and dig on it, dig in it, I should say, you should really get a blessing. And one after the other. And if you don't get blessed and, and enriched in your life by reading the Bible, you may not be listening to what God's trying to tell you. And let me give you one of these verses that helps us understand God's will and, and how God works. And as far as fear not, and it's probably a favorite verse of some of you. Some of you may have it memorized. Maybe you've got it marked in your Bible. And it's not good for just some of us. It's good for all of us. And it's a, a wonderful help here. Turn to chapter 41 and verse 10. And please stand with us this morning in honor and reverence to the reading of God's Word. Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Fear not, or fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now we'll dig back into that a little further, but let's pause for prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that we're uh, able to come into a place and study we know, Father, that you have preserved your word for us. And we know, Father, that your word uh, has a meaning to us in daily life. Not just something to glance over. Not just something to read on Sunday morning. But something to use daily. And I thank you for your scripture. All scripture. And Father, as we look here and as we think toward you, as our minds are are press toward you, Father, this very morning in worship. I just pray that you would touch someone's heart. I can't do any touching of a person's heart. It's the Holy Spirit and it's you, Father. We just thank you that you work in the ways that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated this morning. And what a promise. What an encouragement this verse is. What a uh, we had worship rally this week every night, but what a rally verse this is. As we can come together, <clears throat> we can stay away from the, the fleshly thoughts or the flesh of trying to do things in our own uh, bodies, but rely on the power of God's will to lead us and the workings of it. And the main word there is fear not, or two words, fear not. wonder why we as Christians, we don't just buy into what God has for us. I mean, we try and we try. Now, I'm talking to you from experience here. I'm not preaching to anybody but myself today. Y'all could listen in. But why is it that we try in our own energy, in our own way to do things? To try this and to try to live up to this and to try to do that. <clears throat> We look toward this fear and we think, well, what if? That's a monster. We'll talk about the what if in a moment. What happens when we go there to that what if and not trust God? Not trust God. 
I want to give you three things right here, and I don't have them on the screen today, but just three quick things, and then we'll go a little further into the message. Three things. Number one, fear can paralyze you. Fear can paralyze us. It can make us stop in our tracks. God has given us a plan, or He's given us something to do. He's given us a task. He's given us the gifts to be able to complete that task, and somehow or another we allow fear to stop us. Y'all with me this morning? Okay, I'm just checking. Just want to make sure. It's a life test right there. Just make sure you're alive. Now, oh, we don't go out of our way. We talked about this a little bit in Sunday school this morning. We don't go out of our way. And when we meet a stranger or we're, we're at the grocery store, we don't go out of our way to tell somebody about Christ. That'd be crazy. People look down on me. We may fear. We may have fears that keep us from doing these things. We may fear man. We may fear that uh, we might get embarrassed. We may fear that we might blow it. We, we can't lead a, a person to the Lord. We just don't have it all in our brain. We have to have a Bible with us. And that'd look weird, wouldn't it? A little sarcasm there. Secondly, fear can cause you to miss opportunities not only in the spiritual life or your spiritual walk with the Lord, but it can also uh, keep you from fulfilling the responsibility of the secular side uh, of your work. You know, someone asks you to do something at work. <laughs> I ask a fellow to do something at work. He goes, I don't know how and, and I don't want to learn. That's a good attitude, isn't it? Well, buddy, you'll be at that pay level the rest of your life. If you don't want to learn and you don't want to do it, then, then you'll be right there where you're at. What keeps us from going on? You know, uh, many people miss that opportunity, not only at work, but they also miss it in the local church. Same thing. We all could notch it up just a little bit. Oh, Brother David, we're wore out. We just had VBS. I know that. We all could notch it up. You could teach that class. You could hold the, that extra discipleship time with those two fellas. You could be more faithful than you're allowing yourself to be in today's time. Hello? Y'all didn't know I was going to come in here and step on toes. Number three. It's, it's called fear, y'all. Number three. Fear can cause you to live in defeat instead of victory. And I'm talking about the victory that God is in control of. I'm talking about that victory that God can bring to your life, and not just to your life, but all through your life. His power gives us courage for the journey. That's the title of today's message, Courage for the Journey. But it's not courage that we drum up. It's courage that we get from Him. Now what I want to do is, I just want to give you a very simple outline today. It's, it's something, how God opens one verse, and there's plenty in there. One, one verse. Now I'll reach over into Psalms for some things a little later, but I want to think about this one verse. And I hope this outline would be something that you could maybe return to in the days to come. Just think about that for a moment. Because if you're in the midst of a, a, a problem time or a troubled time, maybe you are fearing something. We all do. But God says, fear thou not. So maybe you're in that, in that time. Now, look carefully at that verse there this morning, and I want to give you three things, and, and these are this. First of all, we're going to talk about the presence of God and then we're going to deal <clears throat> with the power of God. And then the promises of God. Now, did you all see that when we read that one verse? Just kind of keep this in your mind as we go along. These three things. And let's start this morning with the presence of God. Look back in that verse 10. The first section of that scripture. You know, He is the ever-present help, isn't He? And I love this way it's, it's laid out here. It's, it's the promise uh, that we hear from another verse. He will never leave us nor forsake us. You know, uh, 
over the years, there's been times in my life when I was crunched for time. I had this to do, I had to do that. I was, I was uh, bivocational, I was trying to do a regular job and, and uh, <clears throat> work for the Lord and serve the Lord in a, in a, a local church. And there's days when it was, I was filled with joy, I'm saved, hey, hallelujah. But there's days when you just can't hardly make it. That old vehicle was ticking. Y'all ever had one of them? The valve tappets, they want to tick. Anyway, I'm just never on time. I always had my foot in the floor. I knew the Lord wanted me to get somewhere. You know, uh, when you have those times, uh, you have to take yourself away from this weak flesh. Put your weak flesh aside. And look unto Jesus. Because He is an ever-present help, is He not? Amen. He is there waiting for us to, to call on Him. He called you, but He's waiting for us. Uh, even in the middle of the Great Commission, over in Matthew 28, He promises this, Lo, I'm with you. How often? Always. Now, always means... <clears throat> In the good times, in the bad times, in good health, in bad health. When uh, somebody just changed lanes on you and had no blinker, he's with us all the time. When you have money, when you don't have money, like I said, it's all the time. No matter what's going on in your life, friend, no matter what's going on in your week, God's right there. He's an ever-present help. The whole verse from Matthew 28 and 20 says this, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You know what you call that? That's an always and forever promise. He's always going to be with us. Well, Brother David, I had some problems the other day as one of them deacons. I had some problems, I just had to do this, and that deacon didn't give me the answer I wanted. You know what? We can't just pick and choose who to cast this truth on, you see. This truth that we read in 41.10 is from the Lord to you. It's to me. And he says, he's always with us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. How many pastors, how many preachers have quit the ministry? Because of being discouraged. What does that say? What does that say? How many faithful church members are not faithful anymore? How many are at home this morning? who used to be in this place. Maybe because of fear, maybe because of circumstances, maybe because of some discouragement, they're not with us anymore. They're nowhere to be found. You contact them and they have an excuse. There's always an excuse. You know, we need the confidence that God gives us in this verse. We need that confidence the, to fear not. I used to fear things. <laughs> I still do some things, but you know what I used to fear was going to the doctor. I just didn't like that sharp needle on the end of that plunger. Did y'all like that? I don't like that. I didn't like to go to the dentist, but I'm a little bit better now. A little bit better. I hated to go to those places. And I got to thinking, when I was young and I was afraid of those doctors and dentists, you know what's amazing? Is how your teeth fade with your body. And the older you get, I've had a tooth to just blow up. It just disintegrated in my mouth. As we get older, the teeth keep up with the body and fade and deteriorate. But how much peace came to my little life when I realized that I wasn't at the doctor alone. My mama was there. Or I wasn't at the dentist by myself. My daddy was right out front. He was close by. And what kind of courage do we get from our parents being there watching over us? 
keeping us out of trouble. If something happened, I know they would be right there. And that's the way it is with the Heavenly Father. And it becomes a reality to us when we realize that He's there as an ever-present help. And that ever-present reality, Jesus is right here with me today, every day. He's with you. I pray He's with you each and every day. You know, the, the problem comes when we start listening to ourselves. When we say, well, I'm strong enough to, to tackle that project. I'm strong enough to do that by myself. I don't need anybody. God's busy. He's doing His things around the world. I won't bother Him with it. But you know what? He wants us to contact Him. He wants us to converse with Him. He is ready to reply. He is ready to help us in these times. And uh, you want to have the faith to make this fear a not a reality. You want to have that faith in your life. And we have to understand that He is there, He's ever-present, and He's ready to help you. Secondly, this morning, we need to rely on the power of God. Look back with me at this verse again. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. And that next phrase there, that next phrase says, Be not dismayed. You know what that means? Be not dismayed. In simple words, in Tennessee talk, it means don't get all worked up over this. Don't let it bother you. Don't get yourself, you know, consumed with worry. Don't make a, a mountain out of a molehill. Am I the only one that does that? I see a problem down the road and I think, well, I've got to do that when it gets here, but I sit there and worry about some things. See, I told you I was preaching to myself, didn't I? Y'all don't have a problem like that, do you? You don't worry about things? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, maybe it's the, the what-if monster. You know? We always have that in our mind. What if? What if you don't get your voice back? What if um, that car you're driving just runs away or runs down and things, problems pop up. What if that happens? What if you never get a, a whatever? You know that just beats you up? From sun up to sundown, you're just sitting there worrying about things. God says don't do that. God says don't do that. He says, for I am thy God. He is, isn't he? Please hear this, this word here. Um, when God says that, He speaks of greatness. Elohim speaks of His divine power. It speaks of Him as a creator. It speaks of how great God is the only supreme being. And what that means is He has absolute power over everything. And why do we fret so? <laughs> we have the one and only God. And He has all the power. He is the supreme being. Friends, absolute power over everything. Even our old humongous, what if this happens? <laughs> well, what if that happens? Big discouraging list of frustration you write down and keep going over in your head. How many of you do that? I got this going on. I got that going on. We just keep, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. But God is saying to us this morning, out of this verse, trust me, I've got this. Y'all with me? Amen. Trust me, God says. I can handle all your problems. Doesn't matter what they are. I'm bigger than you think. He's so much larger than we think about. I'm more powerful, he says, than you remember, or you can remind yourself of me. I'm more careful, I'm more concerned about you personally than you realize. We keep thinking, oh, it's just little old me. But God keeps saying, you're my son. You're my daughter. You're my children. Be thou not dismayed. 
God's asking us to trust Him and not to worry. And, and I guess uh, you have to ask this question. Y'all can reply out loud. Is God a liar? No, He's not. Is God taking a vacation? Did He go down there to Panama City? No, He's there for other reasons, but He didn't take a vacation. He doesn't take a nap every afternoon. My God is awake. My God is alert. My God is powerful. And He can handle anything. He never takes a nap. He's always on watch. He's always on call. And guess who He's on watch for? You. You and me. But it's hard to think right when I got all this pressure, Brother David. It's hard to think right when you're, you're so focused on this to be working out. You have to think, whatever that this is, is it that important? <laughs> you know? It's so easy to fall prey to the flesh, to the craziness that this world is in. They'll put us in a spot. They'll try to tell us to do this and do that. And we say no. God says, realize this. He says, I am ever-present help. Trust in my power. Trust in His power, friends. He, he has all power over everything. And thirdly, this morning, the promises of God. Now we'll look back at that verse 10. Down through the middle there it says, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. That means to be strong in the Lord. That means to be strong in the Lord in the power of His might. Realize, at least try to realize some of His power. He's too large, He's too vast for us to even comprehend, but we need to know uh, of His great power. He's trying to encourage us where else do we find that encouragement? It's over in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Uh, don't go there, but this will be there. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You see, Paul telling the Ephesians uh, powerful, uh, how powerful He is. Be strong in Him. In other words, we don't have the strength physically or mentally. We wear down pretty quick as humans. But we need to submit ourselves to Him. Hand the problem over to Him. It works. <laughs> it works. Sometimes we step out on our own and, and we think, we've got everything lined up. Everything for the future, it's all going to fall in place. We think that we've got it. We give ourselves too much credit. <laughs> Maybe you hear someone say, well, I'm a, I'm a Sunday, school down at, Sunday school teacher down at church. Or I'm a pillar of the assembly over there at Prosperity. You won't hear that here. But people begin to think that they're above average. They begin to think that they have it all going their way. They're above the average people of the local, local church. They get so wild in their, their own mind and in their own sight that they step out on their own. And they foolishly try to make things work. And as I said earlier, they try to live the Christian life under their own power. No wonder you're not winning. No wonder they're discouraged. No wonder they live in defeat. No wonder they don't see the victory of the Lord. No wonder do they know the promises. Do we know the promises? Do we claim those promises? Do we stand on the promises of what God wants to deliver unto you, Christian? What He wants to deliver to you personally in your life? Let me show you just a few verses, and we're going to flip through. They're over in Psalms. If you want to grab your Bible, that'll be great. They will be up on the screen. I will uh, do this rather quickly, but I'll wait on you to find Psalms 27 and, and verse 1. And we'll just jump through a few Psalms verses that will let us know what this is all about. Fear not. Fear not. 
Psalms 27 and verse 1, it says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now you see how those second parts of those sentences always give us a great punch. There's nobody to be afraid of. <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of. God is our source. God is the one that, that will give you the, the wherewithal or, or the uh, intelligence and the, the knowledge. He'll give you a, a, a level and a right understanding of what His Word says. Read that again there. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now look with me in that same chapter down to verse 14. Verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He says that at the first of the verse and the last part of the verse. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. What does that mean? Someone would say, well, God's busy. You've got to wait on Him. No. You're reading a different book than I'm reading. That's the weakness of the flesh, to, to say and think of those things. And the, the fleshy people around us. This is our God. This, this is our Lord. It says, wait on the Lord. That means I have trust. That means I have a trust with faith and, and full dependence upon Him. I'm not using my strength. I'm waiting on Him. You know, as we wait on Him, as we have the courage, as He strengthens our heart, as He strengthens us, here's the part we don't do real well. You know how often says that to us. Wait on God? How often? Continually. What does continually mean? Continually is exactly what it sounds like. All the time. All the time. So we're supposed to pray continually. We're supposed to wait on the Lord continually. Look over to chapter 28. Chapter 28. Real close here. I tried to get these close together. All right. The Lord, verse 7, chapter 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song I will praise Him. You know what? Y'all just take a deep breath in this. and You know how wonderful it is to be a Christian? Do you know that God saved me and I didn't deserve it? Do you know how wonderful that is? That He saved us and, and we're not even worthy. We never would be worthy. But He makes us that way. It's wonderful to be uh, redeemed. It's wonderful to be uh, justified and, and forever reconciled. In other words, you don't have to go get saved again. <laughs> My God is strong enough to make it work the first time. Amen. Hello? But that's the kind of God we have. He, he's there for us all the time. He's the source of our strength. Look at verse 8. The Lord is their strength, and He is the saving strength of His anointed. So we know where the saving power comes to us. Now, move over one chapter, 29 and verse 11. Let me read this for you. 29 and verse 11. The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. So not only will we receive our strength from Him, but He'll also bless us with peace. Now let's go back to Isaiah chapter 41. 
Go back with me. And you know, this should be enough alone. It should free us from the, the weakness that we have. The weakness of our flesh. It should free us from fearing what goes on around you. And many times it paralyzes us. We don't want to make a move. It might be the wrong one. That's fear. God says, fear not. This statement alone. He says again in verse 10 of chapter 41. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. As these other vo verses have said, I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now that tells me that he strengthens me. He strengthens you, Christian. He is the source of our power. And there's one thing that we have to enter there. You have to make the right choice. What choice is that? We have to make the right choice to wait upon God. That's what the verses said. You're strong. You're smart. You're doing well in life. But do you have what it takes to be faithful to the will of God? Do you wait upon the Lord as these words have told us today? Sometimes we get in front of God. Sometimes we jump out there wanting to get things done. We think that's the thing to do. But we have to make the choice to wait upon God and buy into that promise that His strength is coming, that His strength is going to beef us up where we can do His work. And the next promise I've mentioned, I went by it real quickly. In Psalms 46, you don't have to turn there. Verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. There's a story in Scripture. We'll look there in just a moment over in 2 Chronicles. It'll be on the screen. And there's this king named Asa. You may know the story. A small nation. The small nation of Judah. And in the middle of this impossible position that he's in, God is here. 2 Chronicles 14, 11. Let me read to you what it says. Now remember, the problem is these people are going to be killed because there's a great herd of people coming to them, rushing to them uh, in armor and, and mounted up ready to, to kill them. They're going to die unless God intervenes. Look at verse 11. 2 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 11. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord... It is nothing with thee to help. Whether with many or with them that have no power, help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let no man prevail against thee. Now when you read that, is that still true today? God hadn't changed. It is nothing with the help, whether with many or with them that have no power. And look at the, really the intelligence of this Asa, who says one important word to the Lord. He says, help. Y'all ever holler like that? Do you call out to God and say, help me? Maybe you've been there. But this man was in danger. He said, help us. You know, The battle is the Lord's. The source of victory is from Him. It's through the power of God. We play a part in that by yielding to Him. And yielding is hard to do for us humans. But we can put out a testimony to others that says, Fear thou not. So that you can be a representative of Christ and fear not and, and set forth that that victorious 
testimony that God wants you to live. He wants you to speak it. He wants you to talk to people about it. He doesn't want you to be hush mouth. He left us here for that purpose. And going back to that Isaiah 41, he says, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Can you all just imagine that for a moment? Just get the picture in your mind that God is, is lifting you up, that God is holding you up in the middle of life's battles, in the middle of all discouragements that we have. God is holding us and keeping us. <laughs> you know what, folks? I needed this today. I needed this as much as anybody. I need to be reminded of these promises and, and God's ever-present help. And can there be anything better than that? Can there be anything better than God watching over us? God protecting us? How do we conquer fear? Through the presence, through the power, and through the promises of our loving God. You know, there's no reason that we ought to hide in the in the comfort zone, we say. Step out of our comfort zone. There's no reason we should hide in the house that God has blessed you with. Huh. We need to be out. We need to be out doing His work. But you know what? Fear rips us off. We don't get blessings because we sit still too long. We don't get the blessings. Fear will bring a defeat instead of that victory in your life. Fear not. So what somebody laughs at us? So what somebody tells us that we're wrong? Ooh, terrible stuff. <laughs> what if they throw us in jail? That's all right. Paul spent some time in jail. What if they kill us, Brother David? Well, all right, it's God's will. I'll see you on the other side, amen? amen. So we need to... Forget the fear. We need to fear not, it says. Fear not, for I am with thee. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you so for your word. We thank you, Father, that you are near. We thank you, Father, that our Savior, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, is near. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit that resides in us as Christians. And Father, we are so glad, we're so rejoiceful. We enjoy living the Christian life. But Father, there may be someone here who does not know about that. There may be someone here who has never accepted Jesus as their Savior, knowing that He came and He died and He arose for us and for our sins. Father, we just thank you for that today. I pray that the Holy Spirit would, would wake someone up today, whether they be lost, whether they be a backslidden Christian. And show us, Father, how we are to wait upon you. I pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. With every head bowed for just a moment, every eye closed, you know, God can handle it. We just need to hand it over to Him. God can handle it. Do you need to come today and pray? There's plenty of room at the altar today. If you need to come.